Blessed day, everyone. Greeting to you in the name of the Father, the Most High, Allah, God, Yah, yod heh fahu heh Elohim, and in the name of the Son, the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah. This is Neophyte DAG bringing you part two of the message, The Fullness of the Gentile is Over, meaning the times of the Gentile is done. They have no more blessings. They have no more rule over the nations of this planet. In part one, we left off where the fullness of the gospel has been taken away from the Gentiles. And in part one, we identified that wherever the fullness of the gospel is, whichever people or nation that has the fullness of the gospel, they have or been getting the blessings of the Lord and the Father Allah. It's been taken away from the Gentile. It's now been placed in the hands of the house of Israel. We know that the house of Israel are the dark-skinned, melanated people across the entire planet. In particular, though, of the house of Israel is the children of Israel, which is in the United States of America. So the fullness has been taken out of the hands of the Gentile. It's now been placed in the hands of Israel in particular, the house of Israel. So that's where we left off in part one. So now we're going to jump into part two, where it tells us now, since the blessing is no longer in the hands of the Gentile, what is going to happen to the Gentile in these last days since the gospel has been taken away from them? 3 Nephi 15 verse 22. I'm going to give you some breaking news that you might not be considering because you not yet have the fullness of the gospel in your view. But I'm going to give you your own spoiler alerts. 3 Nephi 15 verse 22, now that you know who Israel is and who the Gentiles are, these verses will make more sense. And they... The people, O house of Israel, they did not understand me. That's what the Lord is saying. They didn't understand when I'm telling them things. For they suppose it had been the Gentiles. For they, my children, the house of Israel, understand not that the Gentiles should be converted through their preaching. Hallelujah to the Most High. Allah, the Lord, both Melchizedek, the Gentiles, shall be taught by you, my brothers and sisters, not the other way around, as you have been told. Get out of your fear and know that the Gentile time has ended. They have no more power over you, and you now have to use them your fullness of the gospel to preach on to the Gentiles because they will be converted by you. They shall be taught the fullness of the gospel, the right way, the righteous way by you. Let this rivet in your head. This is a spoiler alert because you understood not. You did not understand because you think the Gentiles were the one in power. They have no more power over you. They know that themselves. The elites, the leaders of the Gentiles, they're, they're just not telling you, but they know. They're waiting for you to get this message and come into yourself and let them know your time is done. Because you understood not that the Gentiles should be converted, should be taught, and they should cleave on to you because of your preaching to them. 3 Nephi 15 verse 23, and again, my brothers and sisters, you understand the Lord not. That he said, this is what he said, listen to the Lord. The Gentiles shall not hear my voice. He's telling you, you're not hearing his voice. You understand me not. And 
because you didn't understand? And they understood me not that the Gentiles should not at any time hear my voice. So you have Gentile prophets, Caucasian prophets, and you know all kind of different people popping up out of nowhere telling you about end time. That if you don't get vaccinated, if you don't do this according to the way of the Gentiles, if you don't do this in America according to the way of the Caucasian Gentiles that are here, that you can't do this, you can't work, you can't buy, you can't sell, and they're telling you all these things you can't buy and sell in Revelation. Nonsense. The mark of the beast has been with you since you have converted yourself to the monetary system. The mark is the money. What you're getting now is an extension of the mark that you already have because they're using the money now to tempt you to get the additional extension on the mark. If you don't do this, you lose your job. Why are you going to take it? Not because you think it's bad for you. You know it's bad for you, but you're taking it because the mark is there. They're using the mark to entice you. You're not going to have any money or any voice in our society if you do not take the extension of the mark. The mark has already been with you. In your right hand, you know a man and a woman by their work, which is their right hand. That's how we as Hebrew used to represent the right hand, know you by your works. That's your right hand. Your forehead is your thoughts. That's where your pituitary lies, which is connected to your pineal. So in your thoughts, if your thoughts is about money, making money according to the ways of the Gentiles, and you're going to get rich, and you need business to do that, and you're going to do all these kind of things with the money because it will make your life much better, and you can buy things, you can travel, you can be a part of the Gentile system. They have already gotten you. You have the mark of the beast in your right hand, in your ways and your action and the things that you do and the things that you're thinking in your mind about the money you have already been marked. But this I'm here to tell you, the Gentiles shall at no time at all hear the voice of the Lord Thoth who is speaking on behalf of the Father, Allah, the Most High, Elohim, Yahweh, yod he fahu he God, unless he shall manifest himself unto them through the Holy Ghost. And you can't have the Holy Ghost if you're not living righteously. You absolutely cannot get that. So it's even more impossible for the Gentiles to hear the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is being given to you, my brothers and sisters, of the house of Israel. That's why so many of you are rising up now, dark-skinned, melanated people. You're all over the internet. You're all over our means of communication. That's where you mean you're caught up in the cloud, the cloud technology, if you want to relate this back to First Thessalonians. That's what it's meant. You're rising up and you're letting your voices be heard and we're disregarding the voice of the Gentiles. We're not asking you to approve anything for us and to attest to anything. Oh, that's true or that's not true. We couldn't care less what you think. We're not being prejudiced. We're being now coming into our own and know our role at this time that you shall be converted through our preaching and that we are the ones who are hearing the voice of the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Allah, and that at no time at all, unless you're speaking righteously, you shall hear the voice of the Lord, O ye Gentiles. Now, we're going to be more specific on what punishment shall be coming at the time, at the end of the time of the Gentiles. No bad deed goes without its punishment, and no good deeds go without its reward. So if you have done wickedly, unrighteously, and have done evil under the laws and doctrine and covenants of Lucifer, the devil, then you shall get and reap your just rewards. 
Doctrine and Covenants 45, verse 31. It's in the Book of Mormon, the second stick. That's why if you don't have those two sticks, the Holy Bible and the Book of Mormon, you're not getting the fullness of the gospel. You cannot. The Holy Bible is extremely coded if you go to the Book of Mormon in plain and understandable language. And there shall be men standing in that generation that shall not pass until they shall see what? You're not going to die and pass and go on about your business without you reaping the just reward of your unrighteousness, of your wickedness, of your evil. And if you're on the righteous side, you're going to get your reward. But you shall see these things, the overflowing scourge for a desolating sickness. What sickness do we have now desolating the land, desolating the planet? COVID. Desolating sickness. Desolating means devastating sickness. What's devastating us right now? All across the land, the entire planet, overflowing scourge of sickness. One strand to another strand, one mutation to another mutation. That's the desolating sickness shall cover the land. So whoever want to block this, you can block the words of the Most High, the Doctrine and Covenants 45 31. Desolating sickness shall cover the land. That's the first sign that you know the time of the Gentiles has come to an end. So mark this sign because it has already occurred. So you're in and off the end time of the Gentile. Their time has ended. What else shall happen? What else are you seeing? But my disciples, which are the prophets, the house of Israel that's rising up right now shall stand in holy places and shall not be moved. That's the people that are rising up. The dark-skinned, melanated people in the United States of America, in the Caribbean, in Central America, in South America, in Europe that are rising up in Africa, in Asia, that are rising up in holy places and shall not be moved. But among the wicked, men shall lift up their voices and curse God, and they shall die. That's what's going to happen. Isn't that what's happening right now? Everyone is cursing the Most High and they're moving to man's way. Vaccinate yourself in order for you to continue the way that man has given you to live your life. Not what God is telling you to do. To repent. Adopt his law. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Ezekiel 47, 12. Trees. Herbs, fruits shall be your food, your meat, and the leaves of these plants shall be your medicine. You're walking away from all of that, and then they're lifting up their voice and cursing the Most High because all these desolating sickness, all these rupturing of volcanoes, all these rupturing of earthquake, all these hails and floods are coming. Everyone's cursing and not repenting. Doctrine and Covenants 45, verse 33. And there shall be earthquakes also in divers places. Divers means under water, under the ocean. So there will be earthquake coming and forming under the ocean. Isn't that what's happening now? What's happening in La Palma now? Isn't La Palma in the middle of the ocean, a small island? Whole bunch of earthquake and volcanoes? Happening now. Check how many earthquakes occurring across the entire planet. Staying with the U.S. is one forming in Hawaii. And one or several soon to come 
in America. Don't worry, that's the big one. And many desolations, a lot of desolations coming on right now. Yet men will harden their hearts, their thoughts against the Most High. And they will take up sword. You see that shaping up right now. Sword means war. All types of instrument of war. One against another and they will kill one another. That's coming up. It's shaping up right now. You see the tension brewing between United States, Russia, China, China, and Taiwan. Tensions are very high. Russia, Crimea, Ukraine, tension are extremely high. All types of difference alliances forming one against one another. So you're in that time, folks. My brothers and sisters, you're in that time. If this doesn't describe your time, then again, you're on another planet. The righteous seeds are standing up right now and letting their voices be heard. Isn't that happening? And those who don't understand them are cursing them. Why don't you take our medicine that we have put aside for you? Why don't you wanna be part of our systems? Why don't you wanna go back to the normal? And we're telling them there's no more normal. That life is done. The time of Esau has ended. And now it's a time of Jacob. But we're being cursed for that. And we're being cast outside of the system. And now we have earthquake in diverse places, in underground, under ocean places. And many desolation will be upon the land. Then we're waiting now for the sword. It's coming that's why I keep telling you, civil war on American soil, world war in the entire planet and on the entire planet, and that world war will find its way on the U.S. soil. That's written in scriptures. Now, I'm hoping the Gentiles, the Caucasian race, Esau, in my white brothers and sisters across the entire world and in America will come to the realization of what the scriptures are saying before it's too late. I want no destructions for anyone, but if you follow the laws, plans, and covenant of the devil, Lucifer, it's going to lead to a path of destruction. If you follow the plan of the Father, and the Son, the Lord, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, you shall be led to a path of resurrection, of blessing, and receiving the fullness of the gospel, the Holy Ghost, and eternal life. So this is a confession that the Gentiles will be making later on, and soon to come. When I say later, I'm not talking far later. It's already happening. But I want them to realize it's never too late to change your ways and adopt the principles, the foundational commandment of the Most High. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Love other nations as you love your own nation. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. And do unto nations as you would want them to do unto you. And this is what they shall say. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of judgment, which is the day of affliction. The Gentiles, the Caucasian race in America, mainly and worldwide, but we're staying with America. That's the dominant nation at this time and where the dominating Gentiles are. Shall come unto the Lord from all ends of the earth, all ends of America. That's why I'm catering this to the Caucasian race in America. And shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, conceitedness, self-praise, boastfulness, and pride, and things wherein there is no profit. There's no, nothing to be gained spiritually from it. 
Jeremiah 16, verse 19, that's what the Lord has told us the Gentiles will say during the time of their afflictions for not repenting their ways and seeking the way of the Lord and the Father, the Most High, staying with his plan and releasing the plan of Lucifer, which is the plan of evil. Cannot sum it up in a better word. To get some more lamenting of the Gentiles, we go to the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. The Wisdom of Solomon, it's in the book of Apocryphas. It's called the Pseudepigraphas. Those are other books of the Holy Bible that was pulled out by the abominable church, the Roman Catholic Church. I won't read all of this, but I'll let it stay on here for a minute. And you will see where it's talking about the righteous man. That's the children of Israel, as well as Gentiles, who have gotten the fullness of the gospel by repenting of their ways and seeking the righteous way of the Most High. This is what those who did not seek the way, which are mainly of the Gentiles, and it's going to be some of the race and the children of Israel. But this is mainly speaking of the Gentiles. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. That's what I'm telling you. We're stepping up right now. We have no more fear. We got the fullness of the gospel. Before the face of such, whose face are you standing bold in front of? First, it's the Gentiles who have demeaned you and afflicted you for 400 years. And those of your own race who have told you that you have gone mad because you're seeking and living a righteous life and giving up the old ways of seeking money, drugs, sex, the high life, you know, the party life and all the other stuff, they've said you have gone mad. But they'll see that you stand in great boldness before their faces and those that have afflicted you, speaking mainly of the Gentile, and made no account of the work that they had you doing, paying you no money at all. Minimum wage during the time of your voluntary slavery and no wage during the time of your involuntary slavery. You can read the rest of this and you'll see what's going to happen once they realize that you are the children and the house of Israel, not the Ashkenaz whom they have set up as Jew, but they are not, as we have covered in Revelation 3, verse 9, and it's also in Revelation 2. They shall, and the entire world shall come to know you as the children of the Most High. So read this on your own. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1 through 9. In order to get an understanding as to why the Gentiles will be confessing and why they will be lamenting, you have to get a full understanding of the book of Jubilees, chapter 9, verse 14 and 15, because these two verses talk about the curses against anyone violating the boundaries. So this takes us back to the sons of Noah, Japheth, Shem, Ham. And as we have identified, Japheth is the Gentile. So the Gentiles invaded the land of Shem because the land of Shem is America. So now they violated boundaries. But this curse was already invoked at the time when Noah divided the land among his sons and his son's sons. So in the book of Jubilees, chapter 9, verse 14, it talks about where the curse was made in the form of an oath. So verse 14 says, And thus the sons of Noah divided for their children before Noah, their father, and he made them all swear an oath to curse each and every one who desired to seize a portion which did not come to his lot. If you desire and you executed that desire, and seize a portion of land that was not assigned to you, then you've broken 
that oath that was sworn. And there's a curse that comes with breaking that oath. Let's talk about it in verse 15. And they said, So be it, and so let it be, to them and their sons forever in their generation until the day of judgment in which the Lord will judge them. This is the time that we're in right now, which is the judgment time. And that oath was sworn not only at the time, but for their sons forever in their generation until the time of judgment. That oath is live and running. So whoever violated that oath, whoever violated the boundaries that was given to them, now they have to face the judgment of when the Lord has come and has returned to judge. That's the time we're in right now, where the Lord will judge them with a sword, that's war, they're going to war amongst themselves, and with fire, what comes from a fire, volcanoes, and asteroids, cosmic devastation, fire falling from the sky. So this is coming, and any of the sun who has violated boundaries, and we know Japheth, the Gentiles, violated many boundaries. They're in lots of areas of the planet right now, which they are not naturally belonging to because they were given the northeastern portion of Europe and five islands above. And as you know, they have invaded the Middle Region, which is the Shem Region, and they have even invaded Ham Region, which is the south of the Equator Region. So these curses were made, and they're coming, so that's what they're going to be going through in these few years that are left, because we're in the judgment right now, and they're going to be judged with the sword and with the fire on all account of the violation that they have made to boundaries. So technically speaking, bringing this to the Americas, the Gentiles are not from the Americas. They seized the land of the Americas from the Shemites. So they will have to face this curse for violating boundaries. That's why they will be lamenting, as in the wisdom of Solomon, and they will be confessing as in Jeremiah. This will take us back again to the book of Nephi. And we're going to go into 3 Nephi 16. And we're going to start at verse 13. And this is going to tell us now more about the Gentile. That they can repent. And the Most High and the Lord want them to repent. But if the Gentiles will repent and return unto me, Say us the Father through the words of the Lord, Doth Melchizedek. Behold, the Gentiles shall be numbered among my people, O house of Israel, that is his people. So we're not creating any prejudice here because we're saying the Gentiles shall be numbered, but you have to give up that way that you've been accustomed to, to afflicting the house of Israel. Israel. You cannot be counted among the numbers of Israel if you continue to afflict Israel, if you continue to live outside of the law of the Most High. I'm going to keep coming back to it, the fundamental law. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Those two cover all the other laws of the Most High. There are other laws, but that those two are the foundation of them. You shall be numbered, O Gentiles, you shall be numbered. Repent and return unto those laws. 3 Nephi 16 verse 14, And I, the Lord Thoth Melchizedek, will not put up with or tolerate my people who are of the house of Israel, my dark-skinned, melanated people, my righteous people, to go through among the Gentiles. You shall not go in and hurt any of the Gentile race or tread them down by means of force. No, that shall not occur, not by the ways that's given to us by the Lord and not by the ways of how righteous people should conduct themselves. Sayest the Lord, you will not 
be allowed to do that. He will not put up with or tolerate that. So we're not promoting violence against a Gentile. No, we shall not tread them down once they have repented of their ways and return unto the Most Eyes teaching, laws, doctrine, covenants that he has made with the house of Israel and as well practice his statutes. You shall return unto the Lord, O Gentiles. 3 Nephi 16, verse 15. But if, here's the if now, if the Gentiles, the Caucasian, the Esau, the white race worldwide, will not turn unto the Lord and the Father and hearken unto the Lord and the Father's voice, that's meaning his commandment, what he's telling you you need to do, I will put up with, I will tolerate, I will suffer them. I will punish them. You're going to go through that affliction and you will be afflicted if you decide not to repent. I will suffer. I will put up with and tolerate my people, O house of Israel, that the house of Israel shall go through among the Gentiles and shall tread them down. So if you decide not to repent and return unto the voice of the Most High, then the Most High is letting the righteous seed spread light among the unrighteous seed. And that light shall surely tread down your darkness. If you want to put it in the physical, literal sense, yes, it means that as well. But this is a warning. Be certain, spiritually, we will use that light to bring peace to this planet. We shall get rid of suffering, war, and rumors of war, and all types of wickedness that has been plaguing this planet. We shall bring that to an end. Oh, my people of the house of Israel, we shall do these things and bring light to a planet so far from light, removed into utter darkness, we shall bring light if we have to punish the Gentiles who have not turned unto the Most High, who have not repented and have hearkened, meaning to listen attentively to the voice of the Most High. This is what this is saying. And in my other message, I shall now tell you now where the house of Israel picked up and will be picking up from the time of the Gentile, which has ended. The righteous seed of the house of Israel, the children of Israel, the dark-skinned, melanated people, the colored people, the black people, whatever other term you want to use to identify them, they shall be gathered again now that the time of the Gentile is done and over with. Blessings in the name of the Father, the Creator, Allah, Yah, yod heh he, Elohim, God, the Most High, and in the name of the Son, the Savior, the Redeemer, Thoth, Melchizedek, Jehovah, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, Michael, you are the Holy Ghost, Michael is within you. Stand strong, be strong, and stay strong until the next message. Mm -hmm.